All right. So we talked about cleaning yesterday, and at least part of it. Um, for me, I think the biggest things for cleaning, number one, we've already talked about dates. Dates are one of the things you have kind of the biggest problems with. The other ones are free text. Free text is usually kind of uh, a nightmare where I'm talking about like cleaning, and I mean you have some data in there that you want to change, rearrange, manipulate. Um, that doesn't mean, you know, um, something with your database has gone wrong, that kind of stuff. Uh, and the other functions we've talked about, finding missingness, finding odd patterns, usually do some exploratory data analysis, some tables, some histograms, something like that. Uh, finding maxes and, 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 the, and the like to find kind of odd uh, data, especially when you do tables and you see something coded um, a little bit strangely. So the one thing I will say when, when you're doing stuff coding is like 0, 1, 9, 99 or 999, that kind of stuff. When you do like a table or a histogram or those kind of things, those kind of pop out almost immediately. When you cr create them as factors, it's not so obvious. But um, in continuous va uh, values, for example, they still make like age, for example, 999. So exploratory plots can pick those up really well. But a lot of times, if you have people writing text, you just have a lot of ways for things to, to be kind of inconsistent or non-regimented. Um, so, but there are some functions. There are a lot of functions to work with strings. Uh, one in base that I use a whole bunch there is paste and paste zero. The biggest difference between paste and paste zero, paste assumes when you paste things together, you want to, by default, paste them with a, a space. Right? So paste, if you put uh, visit and the numbers one to five together, uh, and you don't put anything in there, if you don't put anything else, you don't specify the separator, it assumes you want to separate them by spaces. It's not a bad default. A lot of times you do want to do that, but... Um, majority, uh, the more, majority of the time I'm doing things and I'm pasting stuff together, I explicitly just say the separator. Paste zero, on the other hand, uh, was created kind of out of convenience to say like, you know, not that many times I really want spaces. I just want you to join the things together. I don't want you to do anything else fancy. So paste zero essentially says paste with no separator. Um, it does have the same arguments as paste, so you can put sep in there and you can put collapse. So sep determines what you're going to do to separate the things when you paste them together. So in this case, I put an underscore, so it's visit underscore one, two, three, four. There is uh, another argument of paste called collapse. So in this, it pastes them together and has a character vector of length five, right? After we say collapse, so by default, it doesn't collapse anything together, if you specify a separator or a thing to collapse the data over, it joins all these vectors together in one super string, one really, really big string. Sometimes you want to do this as well. So set will separ uh, tells you what you want to separate the strings with, but it usually keeps it in multiple strings. Collapse tries to collapse everything into one big string. So, um, Again, uh, you can say other things than you know normal stuff, uh, normal spaces or underscores and that kind of stuff would be your separator. So here we say two is going to be, we go to the sort. So we pass in three, three separate strings into paste, and, and we want to separate it by day. So what it does is it takes two, puts the word day in space, takes is going to be, puts the word day in space, we go to the sort. So the, re uh, the result is today is going to be the day we go to the sort. So pasted all those together into one string. Uh, so and again, paste zero uh, does things a little bit differently. It just doesn't do spaces as default. Um, so if we didn't specify the separator again up here, visit space one, visit space two. So paste joining stuff together, joining strings together. Um, and again, if you say paste one to five, doesn't do anything. Doesn't actually paste anything together. So, paste will join vectors, separate vectors together. So this is just one vector, one to five, right? Before, it, this was two vectors. The first vector would just happen to be one element, visit. The second vector was one to five, and it pasted them together. 
Here, you say just base one to five. It doesn't join them together, okay? Because it says it's only one vector. I'm only gonna paste things from this vector and any other, other vectors that you specify, right? So the first one doesn't join everything together, but if you wanna take one to five and, and put it into one big string, that's what collapse does. Majority of the time, I'm not, I don't use collapse. Majority of the time, for example, I just use paste and paste things together. Or I just use set to determine a separator and pass in multiple things. Okay, so we've already talked about some of these. Two upper to lower, make all th things all uppercase, make things all lowercase. There is no proper in R. Um, you can you can kind of do that, but uh, I think there's like some dis disagreement in the community if there's like an actual technical definition for title case and stuff like that. Um, if you Google it, there are people just say like this is if you want to uh, to make things proper where every single word after a space is capitalized, you can do that. Uh, there are functions out there to do that, but nothing in base R. Um, STR is trim and trim WS. Uh, we'll trim wood space either at the beginning or the end. By default, it does both. So it says if you have like space, your name, space, 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 you say trim WS, it'll take out that white space at the ends of it. Um, but it won't do anything to the white space in the middle. So if I had two spaces, the name John, five spaces, my last name is Shelly, and then six spaces, it'll just trim the front and the back. It won't do anything to those five spaces in between. Um, NCAR gives you the number of characters in a string. So if you said NCAR on N, um, a vector where the first element had four letters, the second element had five letters, it would give you two numbers back, four and five. So this is the package we're going to talk about today in detail, string R. So in string R, it's, it's similar, it, it's written by, again, the same people, it has a consistent, you know, syntax and that kind of stuff. So in all string R functions, the first argument is the string that you want to operate on, right? So let's say you have a column or something of names or something like that, and you want to you want to manipulate that. That's always going to be the first argument to a string R function. So the reason that's important is because that makes it really easy to do piping on this kind of stuff. So I I have not uploaded the non-piped versions of the, of the lab, but I will do that uh, by the end of the day. All right, so it makes some things more intuitive. Um, it's different than the base R syntax. Uh, it's used on forms for a lot of answers. It has standard formats. First format is the string in very similar ways that in dplyr works on data frames. The first argument of our dplyr function is the data set that you're working on. So, okay. R can do, I mean, all the functions we're talking about is either like one of three things. You either want to find a string or you want to replace something in a string or you want to extract that part of the string, right? Those are generally the three operations you want to do. Everything else is kind of combinations of the two, or of the three. Um, so, uh, unlike Stata, it has really rich ways to do some of this stuff and Stata allows you to do some of this stuff called regular expressions. So regular expressions are kind of its own kind of language onto itself, but you can think of it as kind of search on steroids, right? So in Excel, you can do control F or command F and find text within the document. You can do that with, with R with these commands, with like str, you know, detect and stuff like that, we'll talk about. But regular expressions are much more robust, a much more uh, diverse way of specifying the way you want to match things. So um, it can be complicated or it can be pretty simple, but it does have some uh, characters that we should talk about that are special. So in regular expressions, the period means any single character. It's anything, right? It can match literally anything, a space, a digit, a, you know, a letter, Capital letter, it doesn't matter. Star means repeat the previous thing as many times as the last character. So if you say dot star, that matches literally anything, right? Dot star means any character, 
sorry, dot means any single character that you have on your keyboard. Star means repeat that zero many times. So if you looked for dot star, that would match any string. Okay? So um, for those who use Windows, uh, when you want to like remove something from like a directory or something, it would look for things like star dot star is something I think uh, you used to use for like find and that kind of stuff. Does that make sense? Does that ring a bell to anyone? Star dot star? No? Okay. If you wanted to look for any file name, that would list all the files in your computer. All right. So it's just, so again, star is just a wild card. Right? It's just saying match anything. Uh, question mark uh, makes the last thing optional. So it's like, um, let's say you're saying the last thing needs to be a digit, but you put a question mark. It's like, ah, it doesn't exactly have to be a digit, but if you do match it, I want you to extract it. Uh, the two important ones, carrot and dollar sign. So carrot, or the hat, or whatever you call it, says the beginning of a string. So if I say carrot A, and I put that in some of these search functions, it says, I want you to find things where the very first character is an A, a lowercase a, specifically. Okay? Dollar sign means just the end of the string. If I say B dollar sign, it says, I want any character string that, ma that has a B, lowercase b, at the very end. Okay? So, um, again, like, let's say, uh, let's see if we give examples. Um, but let's say, you know, um, I'm John Michelli. Let's say there was a Joe Michelli. If I said J dot star space Michelli, that would match Joe and John. Okay? Because it says find J, find any letters in between, anything for a while, and then look for a space in the word Michelli. And it'll match that. Okay? Yeah? What if you don't want it to specify case as it is still? So, good question. So, by default, they will ignore the case. Uh, the string R functions ignore case. You can specify that they don't do that, so that they are case sensitive, but by default, they are not. Usually, that's what you want anyway. I mean, otherwise, you have to do something where you say hello or on the string and then do this, the matching. But you don't have to do that for string R functions. So the reason we talked about lists yesterday, those confusing little objects, one of the main reasons is string split. So in string R, so uh, there are some slides at the end of this deck that talk about some of the base R functionality. I will not go over pretty much any of them other than these. Uh, because although I, I, I'm starting to use the string R functions a lot more, these are two that are just ingrained in me, sub, sub str and str split. String R has versions of these. It's str underscore sub, str underscore split. And what these are is you say x, right? this is the string that you're passing in there. Start and end. So start saying, where do you want to start in the string? Where do you want to end? So if you say one, four, it's going to say start at the first character, stop at the fourth, just give me that. So it's taking a substring, right? There are, I think it's the same command sub str in Stata, and I think it's the same in Excel. So sometimes you're saying like, the, this ID variable, the first four digits, or the first four whatever, are always the site, right? The site that it's at, for example, or the country or something like that. I just want to grab that. That's one way you can do it. Alternatively, a lot of times what you want to do is just split a string based on some sort of pattern. Like split it on spaces, right? Split it on hyphens, something like that. So the thing is, the reason I talk about those special characters is if, for example, you want to split on a period, you have to do things a little bit uh, more carefully because otherwise, if you say pattern equals period, to R, because it interprets that as a regular expression, it says you want to split on any character at all, right? That's what the period is, any single character. So for some of those things, if you want to split on, you know, dollar signs or periods where you have any special characters inside your string, you just have to do an extra step to make sure R knows, hey, don't interpret these as these special things, interpret them as exactly what they are, right? Okay. Um, so let's say X is I really like writing R programs, or R code programs. 
um, and y is str split, and we specified the split to be a space. So what you get back is a list. So the first element is two elements, the second element of the list is a line two, the third element is a line three. Because the third element has two spaces in it, the other one only has one. Okay, so um, we will talk about maybe some simpler uh, ways to do this within the data set. So sometimes you do want to ma manipulate the strings this way, but if you have data that's like really structured, that it's like something dash, something dash, something dash, right? So I would say more of a, a cleaner kind of string. We'll talk about how to just separate that into multiple columns and stuff like that a little bit later. This is kind of for string cleaning. Right? So usually what we're talking about is not strings that like are highly structured, that are, are consistent you know, for each, each separate row. This is for stuff that's usually like free text that we need to kind of do some parsing. So uh, we don't do this in the lab, or we may touch on this in the lab, but there is an interest. So some of the data sets that we have are the property taxes for the last, like for all the properties in Baltimore City or something like that. And the way they specify square feet, the, the area of a plot, is just insane like it, it, it you know so they said they either give you the square foot they give you the square foot with the name ft in there they give you the number of the letter x whether uppercase or lowercase and then another number to just determine you know how big the plot is sometimes it's in cubic feet so they give you a volume i don't know how that's possible but i mean a, a plot of land is only two dimensions to me but uh sometimes they do that sometimes they have uh, you know, the name with sq.ft for square feet, sometimes it's capitalized, lowercase, all that kind of stuff. So that's kind of an example of what we're talking about here. Uh, we tried that one year and it was, uh, yeah, it's a lot. It, it, it was a nightmare. Um, it's like something you have to do for like hours. So that was a question uh, yeah. regarding the source media. Is that uh, are able to specify uh, the starting point of the bit from the left or from the right? Mm -hmm. It's a good question. I don't know if there's an argument that I'll allow you to specify that, but what I would do is use NCAR to, for, so I get a string of how, many, how the length of everything, and then what I would do is, now I have a vector of numbers saying how long something is, right? And then I'd say, so I'd say NCAR, like minus five, let's say, right? And so, so I would use NCAR to determine the length of each individual string, and then I would say, you know, I'd pass in here that vector of, I would pass in that vector of, of you know, NCAR minus five, and then NCAR in there, right? To so say the length minus five all the way to that. Does that make sense? Yeah. So not as simple as left or right, um, there may be an argument somewhere in there that you can specify that. Uh, you could do two. Uh, there's a reverse command, but it doesn't like reverse the string. It reverses it. So like if, think, if something's ordered like one to ten, and you say reverse, it would you know flip it around. But I don't know because you could also theoretically reverse the string, use substring, and then reverse it back. But so I would use NCAR and then subtract the number of places I've made. Good question. So string R, uh, again, exact same syntax, instead of, instead of str split, it's str underscore split. I believe every single function that's relevant that is in string R starts with the three letters str and then an underscore. Okay, so if you say str underscore something, that means it's from the string R package. Okay. And, um, yeah. So, like I was saying before, if you want to split on something special, like these periods, so I like strings. I'm going to pass that in there. I'm going to say str underscore split. I'm going to say I like strings. I want to split on a period. And it gives you one element. It gives you one, el uh, one list element back with nothing in it. That's, again, because... When it says period, it says any character. So it literally split on every single thing. So nothing was left. Okay? But you're saying, no, that's not what I want you to do. I want you to split on just a period. Just, just treat it as a period. So the, the command fixed 
is the command you use for that. So when you say fix around uh, a pattern that you're trying to match, it matches that exactly. It's exactly to doing like find and replace on your computer or Word or whatever. So normally you don't have to use fix, but sometimes you do with special characters in there. So not only the dollar sign, the caret, the period, when you want to put when you want to match things with respect to parentheses, you have to use it. When you have to when you want to match things with respect to square brackets, you have to use them because in regular expressions those mean things. So for the majority of stuff, if you're just talking about text, you don't need to use fix. It's not a problem. But if you're using anything special with respect to regular expressions, um, you have to use fix around that. So I understand, like, if you're trying to learn R, regular expressions is kind of its own, it is literally its own language onto itself. Some of them can be rather, like, wildly complicated if you want to match something very, very complicated or your data is just really kind of strange. But for the most part, you only have to worry about, like, periods, dollar signs, carrots, brackets. And you're usually fine. Um, so again, we're going to use dplyr because, because like I said before, str underscore split, when you split a character vector, it gives you a list back. So in order to operate on things like that, we are going to use these apply functions that we touched on very briefly. So there are two functions that are relevant, sapply and lapply. L apply says apply a function over a list and then return a list back. That's what the L stands for. I want a list back. S apply means do the same operation, but when you return something, if every single time you return something, it's of like the same type. So let's say every time you return uh, a character vector that's of length two, every time you go to every element of the list, I'm going to try to simplify that. I'm going to maybe give you a matrix back for us. So S apply, the S means simplify it for me. Okay? L apply means always return to the list. S apply means try to simplify it for me if you can. So here, again, let me go back to Y. So it's I really like writing R code programs. It's going to be split on its faces. And it's a list of length three. And we want to, let's say, take the first word. So again, dplyr has that first command. So when you say s apply over this list, so it says go through every element of the list, find the first thing, and return it. In this case, it returns a character of length one. So it says, okay, I'll simplify it for you. I'll just give you a vector back. It's great. I like R. Okay, those are the, that is those are first words in every string. So again, if you want to, if you want to grab some other place, so maybe not the first, maybe the last. You can say y last, and this is the last word in every one of those strings. But if you want to specify anything else, you use the nth command, and then you specify which slot you want to grab, which element you want to grab. So this, this is the first word in every single in all those strings. This is the second word. This is the last word. Does that make sense? So again, we split the string based on spaces. It gave us a list back. We used s apply on that list, and we grabbed the respective in, uh, index that we want. So a lot of times, this is what you, what, what you want to do. You can specify more than just you know one at a time. So with nth, you can say like first and second, for example, and you can give it a multiple of indices. To say hey. I want the first two elements or something like that. All right. These are, uh, for all intents and purposes, the most important functions I believe in string on. str under, underscore detect gives you a logical whether that pattern you gave was detected or not. Did you find it, yes or no? So you say, let's say we had a whole bunch of names. And I said str under detect, underscore detect, on that vector names, John. Did you find John in any of them? It's going to come up true if it found John, false otherwise. st underscore subset. It's more or less a convenience wrapper, but it says, hey, 
I'm going to pass in this, this vector of strings, look for John, and only give me the records back where John was found. So it's kind of like you said STR detect, you gave us trues or falses, and then you subset the data based only on those. Okay, that's why it's called STR underscore subset. Because you're subsetting the data. So this will return trues or falses the same length as the, the vector of strings you gave it. Right? So you say, like, let's give you 100 names. This will give you trues and falses of length 100. This one will only give you, this will give you less than 100. Right? Less than or equal to 100. So, this will return string, only strings which the pattern were detected, but only the pattern. So, this is different from this. So, str subset and str extract are different in the sense, let's say, uh, a bunch of vector of names, you were looking for the name John. This will return, so let's say my name, John Michelli, was in there. This will return John Michelli, right? This will return that string back where it said John Shelley, this will only return John. Right? That doesn't seem that useful when you're trying to do like a straight, a straight match, for example, of, of something. But let's say you say um, John, a space, and then the letter, you know, and then some letter or some digit. Right? And you don't know what that digit is. That's for example, that's an example of a of a regular expression you could say. That will extract, you know, John space five, John space four, stuff like that. STR replace will replace. So you specify the string, the pattern, and what you want to replace that pattern with. Okay. So, um, but it will only do it for the first instance. So let's say um, you had a string that said like blue, blue cat, and you said STR replace blue with green. That would be green, blue cat. It only replaces the first one. If you want to do all instances, str replace all. Okay. There is also, for example, an str under, or underscore extract all, um, I believe. So sometimes it'll only look for the first case by default, but these uh, underscore all functions is if you want to replace every single instance. Because there are times where you just want to replace the first, and there's other times where you want to replace every. Okay, if you look at the help file for modifiers, so type question mark modifiers in R and, let, and look at the help file. So these are the three uh, modifiers they're called. So fixed, again we talked about before, says I want you to match this exactly. Just use the string, just treat it as a string. It's very, it's almost identical to you know, using command F or control F for find on your computer. Regex, which is the default, says use regular expressions and ignore underscore case is an option so that you do not have to, by default, use, you know, to lower to upper. It will it ignore the case and match whatever you're doing. Um, if you set that to be false, it will do exact case matching. Right? So if you say J-O-H-N, all, all lowercase, it will not match anything, for example, that is an uppercase J. Um, so I read in some of the salary data for the city, um, and we said, hey, here's the, the data set's called Sal, and the names of the people uh, in the city are name. So we said str subset Sal dollar sign name, the word Rawlings. So there's three people, uh, three uh, previous mayors. Nothing wrong with Blake. She's still the mayor. She's not the mayor anymore. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, this was from a few years ago. So these are the three people in that data set that had the word Rawlings in there. Uh, if it was lowercase Rawlings here, it would still match those. Couldn't do anything about um, that. So filter and STR detect go really well hand in hand. So you're saying, Sal, I want to filter where you find the name Rawlings. So this will give all the rows of the data for these people. So STR detect and filter, really good combination together. Um, yeah. So I cut. Sorry, I cut. I cut one of the slides out. But so let me go back. These two columns, one read into R. 
are coded as characters. Because R, although you and I see that these are salaries or pays or dollars, R doesn't. R says you have dollar signs in there. I don't know what you're trying to do with that. So when you read these default into R, they are not treated as numerics. So a lot of times what you want to do is strip off this dollar sign and just make it a numeric. So you can start doing histograms, all that fun stuff. But again, dollar signs are special. What do they mean? What do they mean in regular expressions? End of a, end of a string, exactly. So um, when we say we want to match on that, we can't say, hey, uh, I want to take the dollar sign and get it away. I have to do something special. So you have to use this fix command. So here, I'm just copying over the data set. And I'm saying, and I'm reassigning it. I'm piping it into this mutate, into mutate. So I'm saying, I want to replace this column. And I'm going to say annual salary. I'm replacing that column. And then I'm taking that string, piping in an str replace, saying dollar sign, make it nothing, which means remove it, and then turn it into numeric, and then arrange the data. So note, I am doing two separate piping operations in the same in the same command. So in this, this pipe means pipe this data set into this mutate function. This pipe means take this column, annual salary, and pipe it into the string function. And then after we've replaced the dollar sign with nothing, we can say, make it numeric. Okay? So, um, I can do the same thing, right? Let me get out of here. So I could have just said this, right? Let me take that out. Right? Those are equivalent. Just whatever makes the most sense, whatever visually, like step-by-step step kind of seems seems the most intuitive to you, right? So here, we're saying mutate, STR replace, the salary, uh, dollar sign means nothing, as an American, again, we use fixed because dollar signs are special in regular expressions. Uh, where are we at? Okay. Um... One second, I'm gonna see where. We're, okay, yep. So we're gonna go through the rest of these slides really quickly, and then go back, go back to the lab. STR extract all matches all strings. So another thing that you commonly want to do is match digits, numbers. So the way you do that is this double backslash D. Okay. So when you pass this in, we say. STR extract from the agency ID D uh, slash slash D it means extract a digit. So agency ID is A403, right? That, that's the agency ID for some of these. You're saying I want to extract the digit part of this. I don't want that, I don't care about A's. So if you do STR underscore extract, it's going to grab the first one, right? This specify this is special. This is saying this is a regular expression thing. It's saying I want to match a digit. If I say str extract all digit, it's going to give me all of the corresponding matches for digits. So this this one, this agency ID has a zero three zero three one, but it's not. You know we're not always guaranteed. To like, let's say string one had three di or five digits, string two had six digits, string three had eight digits, that kind of stuff. Um, it will return in a different type of format. So, what is this? What class is the object that came out just by looking at it? These are strings, these are characters, but what is the overall output? A list. All right, so you see this double bracket one, double bracket two. So, for example, now you can operate on the same things like we talked about before. We can do S apply and grab the first, the last, any combinations of the two, 
if we want to take these together now, and let me read in this data set really quickly so I can show you, because uh, sometimes that this is not really what you want. Meaning, okay. Okay, so I'm going to show you the first couple agency IDs. So one, what class is this? What class is agency ID? Numeric, character, factor, string, logical. Factor. Right? So you see the levels at the bottom. No quotes around it, it's a factor. So one, you should note that we can, although it is a factor, we can still use string operations on them. Right? So if I do this, which I'm going to do, and it's going to print out a whole bunch of stuff. If I load the string R package. So it gives me this huge list. So it's str extract, agency ID, digit. So it gives all the digits back that it's extracted, but the first one for every single record. This, on the other hand, so that gives us a vector. This gives us a list of a whole bunch of things. So now I'll just call this dig for all the digits. So if we wanted to paste those together, right? So we say s supply dig paste. We could say, you say collapse them by nothing. So if we specify collapse, it's going to paste it all together in one big string. Just do that, that. So that will, remember, the first one was 03031, blah, 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 so on and so forth. Um, if we want to paste all that together, we use the paste command. If we want to put all the strings together, and if we wanted to collapse everything into one string at the end of the day, we use collapse. Collapse, quote, quote, just says, I don't want you to put any separators between them when you collapse it together. Um, so we, we talked about these in some respects. Sorting characters uh, is a little bit interesting. So sort, we've talked about it, and we'll, we'll sort the data. Rank gives the rank of the data. Ties are split, so if two things are tied together. And for example, um, the, the first two are, are tied, it would split the, the ranking. If three things are tied, it would be like 3.33, 3.33, 3.33, right? So it does, does ranking, and it does something with ties. So order's a little bit different, but I'm gonna skip order for a second and go to sort. So when you say sort on a character, might not exactly be what you would think. So this, 1, 2, and 10, you sort it, looks at 1, says 1, okay, 1 is the first. 1, 0, right, says, oh, um, pretty much no character afterwards, nothing, it comes to the top of the list, right? Nothing is less than, than an actual character. So it goes 1, it says, oh, there's another one, we're going to sort that way, and then 2. It doesn't sort this numerically. Um, that's what you may think. So if you are sorting characters, just understand like that's it does alphanumerically. So one and ten, they both have a one in the front, so that's how it's sorted. Um, so order gives the indices. If you use the if you use this output as a subset, we give the data sorted. So it's a little bit strange. So remember before I said like data set, bracket, order, comma whatever to, to say like that's the old school way of, of reordering a data set. So that's because order gives you the indices that say, how do you shuffle this around to make it sorted, right? It's a little bit uh, unintuitive um, in some respects. So it says one, three, two. So it says, if you took the first one and left it as is, it would be sorted. If you took the second element and put it in the third spot, it would be sorted. 
And if you took the third element and put it in the second spot, then it would be sorted. So all I'm saying is order you really don't really, I, I don't really use anymore because, um, at least with respect to data sets, because I use a range. Sort I still use on vectors, um, especially when I'm using sort and unique together. So sometimes I want to see what are the unique levels or, or what are the unique values of, of, a, of a character vector. And then I want to sort them so I can see them alphabetically. Um, and then rank, sometimes you're just doing, you want to rank things based on some criteria. Yeah. All right, so we're going to go to the part three of the, of the lab. And so this is going to do some stuff with some string matching and that kind of stuff. Uh, which will walk through different uh, examples of str subset, xtr replace, and that kind of stuff. So yeah, we'll go through part three in about 15, 20, probably about 20 minutes, and then we're going to go through part four a little bit, uh, walking through it kind of side by side.
Also, cool question. Did everybody get the course email? email? So, yeah. Okay. It was sent out today. Thank <laughs> you. 